traditional uh, resources, which are coal, which are oil, and which are uh, gas. And uh, the transition to the future energy um, uh, fields, uh, the tradi uh, transition, uh, transition is going on very slowly, and we have to speed up our uh, development. The guidelines have been mentioned before. We have Paris. We have a long-term target to lim limit global warming. And uh, it's very clear that uh, climate change means 80% energy. So we have to deal with energy. We have to change the energy consumption. We have to change the production and consumption patterns all around the world. We would like to uh, be in line with uh, uh, two degrees Celsius uh, around the world, an average target. It's an average target. We will have regions where we have a, a higher temperature rise and we will have uh, countries which have a lower one. The average should be two degrees, but the NDCs we have on the table are not sufficient to meet that target. So there has to be uh, more ambition on that and there is a mechanism uh, decided at Paris to get more ambition uh, during the next years. We will have, uh, we will have uh, a review and then we have to decide on more ambition. We have to change the world to a low carbon society and a low carbon uh, economy. And we have heard by uh, A.J. Matur that the window for fossil, uh, fossil fuels is closing. And it's closing faster and faster and faster. So um, we have to be at the forefront in India and Germany and Europe at the forefront of the development to use the opportunities. Well, overarching targets, it's not only climate change, to be very frank on that. It's energy security, which is important for uh, industrialized countries, it's uh, affordability of the prices, so, and then environment and climate protection. We have heard that uh, there will be a breakthrough. Prices are going down, costs are going down for solar, but also for wind and other renewable energies. So there will be lower prices in the future, in the near future, if you compare coal, if you compare fossil fuels with renewables. The average system price of solar uh, rooftop uh, uh, dropped by 70, more than 74% uh, percent during the last years, and it's uh, decreasing during uh, the future. What is very important, and we have that discussion, for instance, in Germany, is the question of jobs. If you replace traditional energy systems by solar and wind and energy efficiency, what does that mean in terms of jobs? And we uh, got the information and we got the experiences that we get at the end more jobs and more economic growth on the uh, local level, on the regional level, compared to the old structures. And we saved a lot of money. We keep the money inside the country, which could be used for the improvement of infrastructure for the creation of economic growth. Nuclear costs are, at the moment, the investment on nuclear plants, at the moment, are much higher compared to the cost of investing in solar and wind. And we continue during the last decades to uh, generate more GDP with less energy. And that's very important and we have to speed up that development in Germany because it's not enough to meet with our very ambitious targets. A road to sustainable energy. Well, one has to talk about timing. Firstly, in short term, it's necessary to optimize the existing technologies, the existing uh, infrastructure, and to use the opportunities with, which are in the existing systems. And uh, I can assure you that we have a lot of those uh, opportunities. It's not everything 
optimal what is in use at the moment, short-term uh, needs. Mid-term, we have to replace the traditional uh, sources by uh, other technologies and we have to improve the infrastructure. That means grids, that means storages, that means load management, what we have heard uh, this morning. And at the end, long term, which means decades from now, we have to create the uh, sustainable energy use, we have to create the low carbon society and the low carbon economy. Well, to build a bridge to the future, how could that process look like? Well, first of all, we have to implement the NDCs. We have at the moment more than 180 NDCs on the table, more or less ambitious. But now the people are coming and questioning how to do that, how to construct policies, construct policies and measures to meet, to comply with the NDCs. Then we have to review the present NDCs and to make it more ambitious. We have to create roadmaps for energy transition in every country. And there is no, and that should be very clear, there is no a single master plan for every country. Because every, the countries have different circumstances, different traditions, different lifestyles, different structures. So that has to be taken into account when one talks about national programs and national roadmaps. But what is important, we can learn from each other. India can learn from Germany, but also Germany can learn from India. So there are, there are lots of opportunities to improve the system. I'm an economist, therefore the question of pricing is a very important one. How to internalize the external effects and that's the discussion on carbon pricing we have at the moment all around the world. And we have more and more countries which are dealing with the carbon pricing, whether that will be emissions trading or charges, taxes, or the uh, reduction of uh, counterproductive subsidies. That's also an element of carbon pricing. Top down has to be used as well as bottom up. We will not succeed if we would like only to use top-down. We have to convince the people, the actors, which are working on the local level. Then a very important issue. We have to avoid lock-in effects. If you decide today on a new coal-fired power plant, that will last for 50 years. And that will, would possibly avoid the... Uh, development of the solar and other um, uh, technologies. So one has to be very careful uh, on the decision on uh, future uh, oriented technologies. What is not very often mentioned is, uh, are the so-called soft measures. I talked yesterday about that. Education, information, advice is very important to be in line with the very ambitious targets. Well, three things are needed. That first of all, time. We need time to change the systems. Transformation cannot happen from today to tomorrow. We need decades to change the system. Money is needed, investment is needed. And last but not least, acceptance by the public is needed and we learn that not only in Germany, but also in other countries all around the world where the intention is to change the systems. Very important, the transfer of technology, finance and capacity building, we have heard about that, but that a very important discussion on the international level, how to transfer uh, money, how to transfer technology from the industrialized world to the developing world. And you know possibly that there will be 100 billion yearly uh, from the beginning of the next decade, which should be used to uh, support uh, the investment and to support the change from the old societies to a new one. And in my mind, it's necessary that those money should be used to, to make the whole world more sustainable. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I try to be as brief as possible. Thank you very much, uh, Herr Schaffhausen. Uh, may I now request His Excellency, the Ambassador of Georgia, to kindly uh, make his address. Well, it's an honor and I'm very delighted to be here to address this prominent audience. First of all, uh, as an ambassador of Georgia, I'm representing, I'm servicing of my country and uh, of course, uh, what is important for me, uh, just to bring the awareness about Georgia and maybe um, because of the some historical circumstances. Um, Georgia were not on the map of the world for a, for a time, but now actually we are back and it's based on our historical legacy. And starting from my name and surname, actually, like you mentioned at the beginning, my name is Archil Zuliashvili, so it means in Georgian, Shvili means a son. So I could be like uh, in Bengali, I'll be Zulia Surya. Or Surja, maybe, right? right. Yeah. Um, so let me uh, speak about, um, about us, about Georgia, what we are doing, um, how we are doing, how we see the development of our country, and what is our place in the modern world. One of the main uh, attractions of Georgia is a strategic uh, location. The original transit roads from north to south, east to west. We are positioning our country as a regional transit hub for goods transportation. Uh, contribution to the development of the international transit corridors is one of the main priorities of our government. Of our government and government in Georgia especially. Georgia has free trade agreements with the European Union. Uh, we have free trade agreements with our neighboring countries. Uh, also, a few, uh, few, few months ago, we, tried, uh, we, we signed an agreement with, uh, with, with China as well. Um, so, we think that it's, it's going to open a new avenue uh, for increase of our cooperation. So, decades ago, Georgia has initiated a great number of comprehensive reforms that aim to facilitate sustainable economic development. The main pillars of our reforms is to liberalize the economy and integration in the global markets. Uh, implemented reforms resulted in a stable microeconomic environment and attractive business environment. Uh, diversification of trade relations by establishing preferential regimes which main trade and regional powers is very essential. Enhancement of transit, uh, transit, transit potential of the country is also very essential and very important. Main pillars for the Georgian regional cooperation are the transport, energy, communication, tourism. Georgia has well-developed transport, infra transport infrastructure which allows transportation of goods by all kinds of carriers, air, land, maritime, pipelines, and uh, transportation lines. In order to utilize the existing transit potential at its maximum event, ensure capacity growth of cargo flow, as well as a reduction of delivery time, government of Georgia modernized national transport infrastructure and actively participating in a number of multinational large-scale projects. Um, to talk uh, about the energy security, uh, which is very important and rising challenges, it's very important for Georgia to secure itself and uh, here I would say that, uh, unfortunately, um, around 15, 20 years ago, um, when, the, when the broke up happened uh, of the USSR, uh, Georgia faced a big problem regarding the energy. And I can tell you that uh, uh, even when I was a student, uh, we were getting the electricity in our homes only two hours per day. So it was a big challenge for us. And by the time um, we started to search 
for the new opportunities, new directions, and uh, new ideas how we are going to develop our energy sector. So the issue of the energy security and the rising challenges related to it is one of the most important topics in the world, uh, particularly in light of the growing demand for energy. There is no doubt that energy is one of the most essential pillars for the progress and prosperity in any country in the world. It is obvious that the hardly can any country manage to deal with these challenges entirely on its own. Therefore, it's our global responsibility to join international and regional, regional institutions and initiatives to outline solutions through multilateral and efficient cooperation. Energy becomes a component which shapes the global politics of the wider Eurasia region, Eurasia region to this great extent. The vast energy resources of South Caucasus and Central Asia creates new opportunities for cooperation among energy producers, strandists, transit and consumer countries ac across the region. Georgia, in chain with its, our strategic partners, is a logical bridge linking energy rich Caspian region with the major consumers, industrial areas of Europe. Having such a geopolitical location, Georgia is well situated and suited to host oil and gas transport projects and infrastructural projects as well. We develop transit infrastructure, pipeline, railways, uh, power transmission lines in full capacity. Well, Georgia's uh, natural wealth is comprised particularly of water and water resources. We have around 26,000 rivers in Georgia. So, Georgian hydroelectric potential with its rivers, lakes, waters, ice, underground waters, and bogs ranks among the world's greatest. So first, uh, so um, the Georgian power electricity in Georgia began in 1887. And uh, a heating engine was installed in the Georgian Drama Theater in Tbilisi. So from that time, the first uh, hydropower station was built in 1898. From that time, it was completely unimaginable for us that we are going to go through all of these difficult times. But finally, we managed, and today Georgia is a net exporter of electricity. And uh, the current public and private investments are pushing the market to expand even more. The Georgian power grid is connected uh, to the grids of the, of the regional and neighboring countries. So they address the major concern of regional and global challenges. Multilateral framework of cooperation is important. Therefore, it's our common interest, the new platform for cooperation alongside with the existing ones will be not only the instrumental for enhancing each and every country's natural advantages, but would also strengthen the security and sustainable development dimensions for the widened Eurasia region. Um, as an ambassador of Georgia, of course, I would like to speak and share with you our bilateral relations with India as well. And um, to tell you, frankly, we share historically a very close, uh, close relations. Uh, we had uh, civilization linkages. However, currently I would note that these linkages are way below their past levels. In addition, both countries share quite weak bilateral economic linkages, linkages but uh, we are working towards increase our cooperation. Um, and uh, this year was uh, quite re remarkable in bilateral relations. Uh, we signed the air service agreement. Also, uh, we started the feasibility study of the free trade, and uh, we believe that um, the signing of the FTA between our countries would be an important milestone uh, to bring our successful cooperation to the higher level. So I'm glad to emphasize that there are growing interests of Indian companies to invest in Georgia. Uh, we have now Tata Group, uh, Jindal, Petroleum and Vestra Group uh, are operating in Georgia. Um, Tata Group and Tata Powers um, already implementing the Cascade Hydropower Station project in Georgia, and uh, this year they are going to accomplish it. And we are looking forward to close cooperation with them uh, in the future. Um, well, I prepared actually the small presentation uh, in the PowerPoint regarding uh, 
the, the Georgian energy, and you can see here, so it's uh, prepared by, the, by our ministry, and uh, so what I was talking about, enhancement of energy independence and security. So, yeah, so full screen, yes, please. Here, we're here. Yeah. So, promotion of the here, yeah. promotion of the of the renewable energy and energy efficiency development, implementation of the regional projects, improvement at the legislative base. It's very important. Also, hydropower energy, wind energy, solar energy. So you can see uh, power plants of Georgia and uh, what we are doing and what we are looking forward in the future. As is two new objectives of generation, 18 hydropower plants, two thermal power plants, one wind power plants, and you can see the total, total capacity there. Opening railway and power plants projects. So this is a list of the projects and what we are looking forward to accomplish and the investments we are going to attract. This is a power supply to our neighbor countries. So you can see that uh, we have connection to the Russian Federation, our neighboring Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Turkey. Yeah? And uh, there are other strategic pro projects in, the, in this sector as well. And uh, what I was talking about, our transit potential, what, what we see, how we see that you see that we already have the major pipelines going through Georgia, which has, uh, gives us uh, the energy security as well, and uh, you see the expansion of uh, transit potential. Um, now the, the other, what I want actually to show you about the video presentation, uh, we have um, one of the, the biggest dam, it's called the Inguri Dam, which, is, which was built in uh, 1980, and uh, we created a new concept, how to merge the touristic sector with the energy. So this, uh, the video presentation, you will see it now. Yeah, please. Talks about it. And I'm
Thank you very much, sir, for sharing the Georgia story. Very pretty country, indeed. Uh, now, uh, I have uh, the pleasure of inviting Sir Dominic Asquith, uh, the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to India, to deliver his address. Sir Dominic, please. A very good warming. Very good morning to you, and thank you, Deb, very much for that. I, I feel rather inadequate. I've got, I've got no power presentation to give you. Uh, in fact, no video either. I've just got my words, uh, and I've been pruning them uh, in the course of the speeches to try and pare them down to the minimum necessary. So I hope I'll get in your good books, Deb, by being relatively short. But uh, I just want to say, first, it is a real pleasure to be here at this conclave, not merely here, but to be a, a country partner and to have uh, in the audience uh, a significant number of British companies uh, represented here. It's the a reflection of the importance uh, we give to the subject, to Kolkata uh, and to uh, you personally, Deb. So thank you very much for that. It's a real pleasure to be here. A little secret, we have... Um, seven deputy high commissions around the country other than obviously the headquarters in Delhi. I committed myself when I came here 18 months ago to get around all seven every six months. So I should have been here once this year. This is now my third trip. Uh, with a bit of luck, if I'm given permission by Bruce, I will come here another two